Hey everyone, how you doing today? Hopefully you're having a good day wherever you are. In this video, we're going to be looking at creating a SDL3 little demo using the new main callback system, subsystem, that the SDL3 team has introduced into the mix. I've created a blank project in Visual Studio, a blank console project in Visual Studio, and I've added a main.c file, and that's all we're going to be updating today. The code will be available in the description down below to my GitHub, and you should be able to download the project and get it up and running on your own system. So in the beginning with SDL1 and SDL2, if you recall, we normally have a main entry point defined as main in dark C, char star argv array, and then return zero. And pretty much every single SDL1 and SDL2 game demo application needed to have this main entry point. Well, this is fine for systems such as Windows, Linux, or Mac, but not so fine when you're working with consoles and other devices that run SDL3 code. So the team has had to make a lot of workarounds in order to be truly cross-platform functional. And so with SDL3, they've decided to introduce a callback system. The goal is that all a SDL3 user has to do is implement these callbacks and SDL3 will take care of the rest for you and run things, clean up everything properly, and Bob's your uncle. So we're gonna do that right now. So before we start, we need to define SDL main use callbacks one. Okay, and then we will include our SDL3 headers. So we're gonna include SDL3 slash SDL.h and SDL3 slash SDL main.h. And then I've also included the standard bool and standard IO header files. To make use of these callback functions, we only need to implement four of them. SDL underscore app in it, SDL underscore app event, SDL underscore app iterate, and SDL underscore app quit. So I'll start with that quit. You'll notice that it is a void function which passes in a SDL app result as one parameter and the other parameter is a void pointer to our application state, which we will be creating shortly. SDL app iterate is called on each iteration, each update iteration of our application. Think of that old main game loop. And so this would be called every single game loop. Uh, likewise, the SDL app event callback is triggered whenever there's an app generated by SDL3, such as resizing your window, pressing the keyboard, moving the joystick, etc. And finally, the SDL app init callback is triggered upon startup of your SDL3 application. So we are going to take a look at this right now. We need to first define our own application state structure. And this is just a tiny encapsulation of the SDL window, SDL renderer, and then a Boolean to flag if our app is still running or not. Remember how we have this void pointer to app state. This is the structure that will be passed as a function that we can reference within each of these callbacks. If that explanation didn't quite make sense, don't worry. As we implement everything, it should become pretty clear. So we're going to jump right into SDL app init. So we're going to log an app init call just so we can see on the output what is being triggered when. We are going to make a call to SDL underscore init, passing in the SDL init video flag. And if we get an error there, then we just return SDL underscore app underscore failure. Each of these callbacks will need to return a SDL underscore app result. And so usually if it's SDL app continue, then everything is good. And SDL app underscore failure, then there was an issue and all of the cleanup and exiting will take place. So after calling SDL init, now we initialize a 
pointer to our application state structure, we use a function called sdl underscore calloc, which is similar to the C calloc and malloc functions. We want to allocate and clear a application state variable and return it as a pointer. And if it's failed, then we return sdl app failure. Next, we call sdl underscore create window and renderer where we pass in the title of our window, the width and height dimensions, along with any window flags. And so for now, I wanted to use SDL window resizable just to show you what kind of events get triggered at the event callback, as well as pointers to our window and renderer objects within the newly created app state structure. So if we don't have a window or a render created, then log an error, destroy our window if one exists within state window, and then return SDL app failure. Finally, we want to set that is running boolean to true. And then we want to allocate the app state void double pointer to the state variable that we created earlier on. And this is what will get fed into each of these callbacks. Okay, so it looks like initialization is going okay. We'll leave the app event for now. And the app iterate is what we're going to be updating next. So to work with this void star app state, we have to take it and cast it to a pointer of our app state structure. Let's clear our screen using SDL set render draw color and SDL render clear. That hasn't changed in the API at all. And then we can do, and then SDL render present, and then pass in our the pointer to the renderer within our state variable. So now what we've got here is SDL app continue to just keep going. And then finally on our SDL app quit, we can, can check if app state is not null and then cast it to our app state variable. And then, so if state render exists, then call SDL destroy renderer. If state window exists, then call SDL destroy window. And then finally, since we used SDL underscore calloc to allocate that memory for state, let's now use SDL underscore free to free up that memory that we've reserved. And that will be called on quitting and shutting down. So we should be able to run this now. Okay, so we've got our SDL3 window coming up, 800 by 600. We can resize it okay. And notice our log message app in it. Okay, if we try to quit, no! of course, we're not implementing anything in our event callback, so we're kind of stuck. So let's deal with that right now. Let's close this up. Okay, so in our app event callback, let's first do the casting of our app state variable into a state pointer that we can use. And then let's use a switch statement to take a look at the SDL event that's getting passed into this function callback. So if, if we are, we're taking a look at the event type, and if it's an SDL event quit, then we set our is running flag to false. And if we're receiving an SDL event window close requested, then we make a log message here and set that Boolean flag to false. And then we keep calling SDL app continue. Now, what needs to happen is at the end of SDL app iterate is we need to check that is running flag first to see if we keep going or not. So I'm doing this by returning, I'm checking the is running Boolean from that state structure. And so if is running is still true, then return SDL app continue. Otherwise, if we've set it to false up here in the event callback, then return SDL app success, which will close everything up and signal that we want to clean up and exit. So let's do this now. Okay, we have our app init log call. Okay, we hit the close window X and everything cleans, cleans up. Window close requested and app quit is called. Now let's add a key down event to listen for the escape key. I've added another case to our switch within the app event callback, looking for the SDL event key down. And so if the key pressed is the SDLK escape, which is our escape key, then we create a log entry in that console window. 
and we set our is running flag to false as well. Otherwise, why don't we log the actual key that we're pressing down? So let's try that out and double check if this works. Okay, so if we hit escape, the window should clean up, which it does. Excellent. Perfect. Let's run it again. If we hit different keys, then you can see in our console window that they are being logged there. Okay, so one other event that I wanted to listen for is the resize event. So we'll add another case statement into this for the SDL underscore event underscore window underscore resized. We're just going to log out the dimensions being reported by this event handler. So window resized to percent %d, percent %d. And we are going to be just logging out the window.data1 and window.data2 fields of the event being returned in this callback. So let's take a look at this. Okay, so as we resize the window, you can see the log output being updated with the new window dimensions. There's another set of things that the SDL3 team has implemented, and that is the use of application metadata, what they're calling that. And this is a way of setting things like um, copyrights and other kind of info that is then registered into your application at runtime, which can come in handy on other platforms. So to do this, we're first going to create a static struct of a key and value pair. And we are going to use some metadata property flags defined by the SDL3 team. So we've got a metadata URL string. And so I've just put in the uh, URL to my YouTube channel. The, the creator string, I've defined that as at, at Eric Uzwa. The copyright string, I've just given this an MIT license. And the type string. So here you can put tutorial or game or demo or whatever it is you want to put in there. And this is just a subset of the SDL prop app metadata variables available. So take a look at the documentation. You can update this with whatever else you want for yourself. And so the documentation recommends that you register this metadata stuff before you call STL init. So right after app init log, we're going to define a variable of size underscore T. Then we're going to call the STL set app metadata function with the name of our application, which I'm just calling SDL3 app callback window, the version, which is 1.0, and an app identifier. So I'm just using com.ericuzwa.sdl3. And if that fails, then of course return SDL app failure. And then next, what we want to do is we just want to loop through this array here of these property strings and values, and then call set app metadata property passing in those key values. And we still get our window setting up properly. We can still input things, resize the window, and hit escape to exit. And that is it. Perfect. It's a pretty short one today, but it's chock full of new SDL main callback goodness. I hope you liked this video. I hope you found it helpful in your SDL3 journeys. Leave a comment down below if there's something else you wanted me to tackle next in the world of SDL3. And I will see you in the next video. Peace, everyone.